I just discovered the most impressive crypto hardware wallet on the market right now. This thing not only promises to be quantum computer ready, but also offers a litany of other security features that you might care about. So let's talk about Trezor's brand new Safe 7 wallet. And what exactly is the Safe 7? Well, let's quickly run through the basics first. Simply put, Trezor is calling it their most advanced wallet yet, and I do tend to agree. It is positioned as a premium device though, coming in at $249, and right off the bat, you can tell that this is different than their previous models. For one, it has a 2.5 inch color touchscreen, an anodized aluminum unibody that's very Apple-like, it's resistant to dust and water splashes. One of the biggest changes is that this is the first Trezor that is fully wireless if you want it to be. It offers fully encrypted Bluetooth 5.0 plus connectivity and Qi 2 compatible wireless charging. And I actually got my hands on this device right after the company unveiled it at a special conference that I attended in Prague in the Czech Republic, which is Trezor's birthplace. About 300 guests, including exchanges, wallet providers, and influencers were packed into a venue on October 21st for the the event, which they called a trustless by design. But the biggest news from that event and from this product release is that this Safe 7 device introduces a new component, the Tropic 01 secure element. And it combines that brand new Tropic 01 chip with an additional NDA free EAL 6 plus secure element. And the idea is that it gives the strongest physical protection in the industry. Now I will dive deeper into why I think this chip is such a huge deal in a moment, but essentially Trezor co-founded a separate company, Tropic Square, specifically to build the Tropic 01 chip which is the world's first auditable and transparent secure element. And this is a massive shift away from the industry standard. Trezor's also marketing this heavily as the first hardware wallet built with quantum ready architecture. But what does that actually mean? Well, first and most importantly, the Trezor Safe 7 is not quantum proof. Trezor themselves are pretty honest about this fact. Quantum computing is not an immediate threat right now. Many experts think we have 10 to 20 years or possibly even 20 to 50 years before quantum computers might scale effectively enough to be a meaningful threat to Bitcoin, assuming they can scale at all. So what does the ready part of quantum ready actually mean? Well, it means that the device is designed to handle future quantum secure firmware updates. The Safe 7's bootloader, which is the initial software that starts up the device, and its firmware check already use post-quantum cryptography to verify firmware updates. Why is this necessary now? Well, the post-quantum signature must be baked into the device when it leaves the factory because the boot process cannot be updated later on devices. By integrating this now at the hardware level, the Safe 7 future proofs itself against malicious quantum powered attacks trying to subvert firmware integrity. Okay, let's jump into all the features. As I mentioned, the quantum readiness is mainly about future-proofing the device itself. The current concern is that powerful quantum computers could eventually break the underlying cryptographic algorithms that secure blockchain networks and our crypto. When networks eventually transition to quantum safe signatures, Trezor promises that the Safe 7 will not need to be replaced because it is capable of securely receiving these updates. If the Bitcoin community, for instance, were to move forward with something like a network fork, the Safe 7 would be ready to support the required new address types. However, here's the reality check that people need to understand. The wallet itself, this thing right here, cannot make your existing crypto quantum resistant. Right now, the quantum protection layer only secures the device's boot or startup process. If you're worried about quantum attacks, the threat occurs when you spend your Bitcoin and when your signature is exposed or against old coins that haven't moved in years. To truly take advantage of quantum protection, your crypto would need to be located in an upgraded address type, which the Safe 7 does not currently support. Nothing does. But the plan is that it might eventually get firmware updates to support that. The biggest takeaway here is that you need to be aware that the blockchain network itself needs to be upgraded for full quantum protection. Trezor's philosophy has always been centered on being 100% open source. It's why it's one of my favorite wallets. This allows anyone to review, audit, and verify the code behind it. But for years, Trezor refused to use secure element chips 
because the typical secure element chips are closed source and require trust in third party chip manufacturers. And this is the major point of controversy often brought up regarding competitors like Ledger. Most wallets use secure element chips that require the hardware wallet company to sign a non-disclosure agreement or NDA. These chips are manufactured by third parties who spend decades and billions of dollars protecting their intellectual property and keeping the secrecy. And here's the problem with that. First, you have to blindly trust that manufacturer because the chip is a black box. And second, if the wallet manufacturer discovers any security flaws in that chip, they cannot publicly discuss these flaws in detail because they are bound by the NDA. And Trezor knows this firsthand. They once discovered a vulnerability in a popular secure element chip used by many other wallets out there, but couldn't fix it or disclose it because they were under a binding legal NDA. And of course, as you can imagine, and Trezor was not happy relying on the system. So they took a five year journey to build their own chip. They co-founded a sister company, Tropic Square, specifically to address this issue. And the result is the Tropic 01 chip, the world's first auditable, open source secure element chip that is commercially available and inside this device right now. Tropic Square publishes the chip's digital design, including the actual source code of the chip, the firmware, the documentation on their GitHub. And this allows white hat hackers and the independent security community to continuously test, evaluate, and provide feedback, ensuring the chip only gets more secure over time. Plus the Safe 7 also uses the dual secure element architecture, Tropic 01 plus an EAL6 plus chip. The setup is designed so that if one chip were compromised, the other chip and the main processor would still hold the security, preventing the entire system from failing. And there are a few more features that the Trezor Safe 7 introduces. The first one is wireless connectivity. This is something that everyone has been asking Trezor for. Bluetooth 5.0 Plus allows you to use your Trezor with all kinds of devices like Windows, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. And the iOS compatibility is a huge selling point because older Trezor models couldn't easily connect to Apple mobile devices. And since I brought up wireless, we also need to talk about wireless security. For those concerned about turning their cold storage wallet into a lukewarm storage wallet, by adding Bluetooth, well, Trezor has implemented some security measures to fix that. They isolated the Bluetooth stack on a separate chip and encrypted the traffic between it and the rest of the device. They use an open source encryption that secures every command and transaction, making it impossible for attackers nearby to intercept any data. However, if you still prefer the ultimate air-gapped approach, you can easily disable Bluetooth on the device and use it exclusively with a USB-C cable. Now, the inclusion of a battery has also worried some security purists. However, Trezor chose a highly durable lithium ion phosphate battery, which is the same type that's using some pretty high end electronics out there. This battery is much less volatile than standard lithium ion batteries and is designed to deliver four times more charging cycles, retaining power for years, even if stored. And even if the non-replaceable battery eventually dies, well, the device is still fully functional and can be powered via the USB-C cable. And the display is scratch resistant Gorilla Glass 3, the large touchscreen, which is 62% bigger than the Safe 5, the previous version, has haptic feedback, which does feel pretty great. Whenever you tap, press, or interact with the large touchscreen, the device gives a slight vibration to let you know that your input was registered. The metal unibody design is milled from a single block of aluminum, and it's a pretty sleek looking device. The Safe 7 includes coin control, which lets you manually pick which of your coins you want to spend when you make a transaction and also the network fee paid instead of relying on the wallet's automatic selection. This means you not only control your crypto, but also how you spend it. It also integrates Tor, which is a privacy tool that routes internet traffic through volunteer servers to hide your identity and online activity. The device supports FID02 for secure authentication. This turns your Trezor Safe 7 into a modern unhackable security key for your online logins. If you've ever owned or used something like a YubiKey, well, that's exactly what the Trezor Safe 7 does now. In the Trezor Safe 7, clear signing or seeing exactly what you're approving on the screen is available for most actors within the Trezor Suite software. And lastly, it's compatible with over 9,000 assets and D apps through Wallet Connect, allowing connections to popular software wallets like a MetaMask, Backpack, and Rabi. 
while keeping your private keys safely isolated on the device. So by now you might be thinking, okay, it's a cool device, but do I actually need it? Well, the truth is for many existing Trezor users out there, you probably don't need to upgrade. The Trezor Safe 5 is still very secure. Trezor's own CTO has stated that even the older models, the Model 1 and the Model T, will continue to work and secure crypto. The upgrade decision depends entirely on what you value. Future proofing versus if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Nonetheless, here are some people for whom upgrading might be a solid choice. If you only have access to an iPhone or iPad or other mobile device and you want to securely manage your crypto on the go, the Safe 7's Bluetooth features allow iOS and other devices that the previous models lack. Secondly, if you strongly dislike plugging in a cable every time you want to sign a transaction and you want the simplicity of a large high-res touchscreen, the Safe 7 offers the smoothest user experience Trezor has ever made. Three, if the audibility of the secure element chip is very important to you, well, the Tropic Zero One chip actually is a massive leap forward in trustless design. And fourth, Trezor built the Safe 7 specifically to be a long-term storage solution, touting the extended lifespan of the brand new battery and the quantum-ready architecture as protection for years to come. However, for a Bitcoin newbie who just needs cold storage, the Trezor Safe 3 priced at around $79 might be a better option. With that said, let's talk about the downsides. Because for all the great engineering and efforts that Trezor has been making, there are definite downsides and hard truths that we need to acknowledge here. The most obvious drawback is the price. At $249 USD is a significant investment compared to Trezor's other models. But it's also not the most expensive wallet on the market and given its features, I think that's a pretty good value. No one else is packing in what they are packing in at this price point. But you are paying a premium for wireless features, a larger screen, and technology like the quantum readiness that isn't exactly required today. A hardware wallet is only as strong as your seed phrase security. If you make a mistake, such as falling for a phishing attack and entering your seed phrase online, or simply losing your physical backup, you will still lose your crypto even with the most secure wallet in the world. Your ability to secure your crypto relies entirely on keeping your recovery words hidden and safe, ideally stamped on titanium or stored securely offline, which is why I highly recommend a product like Stamp Seed, which you can find linked below. It's a much more secure way to protect your seed phrase. Trezor also has their own solution I'll link down there. As for the quantum ready feature, while technologically impressive, this is currently more of a talking point than a functional necessity right now. However, the Safe 7 is designed to ensure that you won't need new hardware when and if that upgrade eventually happens on the network level. But ultimately, no matter which hardware wallet you choose, you need to remember that you, unfortunately, are the weak link. Which is why I made this video that's all about common scams and the best practices when it comes to your crypto. That video could be the difference between securely holding all your crypto or losing it all forever. So go watch that. Goodbye.